on this episode of In the Know. It's back to school time from elementary to middle to high school. What schools and kids are doing to get ready. Plus, a great example of what business can do to help education. A local school gets a big donation. How it will help kids and their parents. As buses hit the road for the start of the year, what you need to know to keep students safe and avoid a big ticket. Welcome to In The Know, I'm Helen Raptus. The 2010-2011 school year is upon us and it's an exciting time to be a part of Vancouver Public Schools. District leaders are focusing on their goals for the school year, while school staff members are working hard to get schools ready for returning students. At Lincoln Elementary, some kindergartners didn't even wait for the first day of school to start learning. The Jump Start program gave them a sneak preview of what school will be like this fall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This unique program, available at several elementary schools in the Vancouver School District, brings children in before the official start of the year so that they can learn how to learn. We teach uh, the kids from even holding a pencil to holding um, scissors and how the scissors work, um, from sitting on the ground crisscross applesauce. I'm teaching social skills, lifelong learning skills of working together with others, being respectful to others. More than just academics and social skills, the Jump Start program also eases the kids' fears about the start of school. The first day of kindergarten, the kids are very skittish, um, crying, scared. Sometimes kids hide behind chairs or the cabinets or just want to cling on to mom or dad. Um, and so this program helps them uh, familiarize with the classroom settings, the teachers, and being able to connect with other friends in the classroom. So when that first day of school comes, um, they're not so um, skittish to come in that classroom. They're excited. At Alki Middle School, staff had a busy build-up to the first day. Parents and students registered for classes and took a look at their new school. They also got a chance to meet the staff members who happened to be around. And to get the classrooms in shape, maintenance workers gave the chairs and desks a good cleaning. They scraped gum from underneath and made everything shiny for the students. Before classes begin, student athletes return to school to begin fall practice. We caught up with Coach John O'Rourke at Columbia River High School at an afternoon practice. The kids are running through drills, learning offensive and defensive schemes, and getting ready for competition. They're, you know, really excited to get going and, and uh, you know, have a really good year. Coach O'Rourke runs his practice a little differently than many coaches. Instead of early morning practices, he brings his students out in the afternoon. O'Rourke says the kids are more alert and get more out of practice. Columbia River parents are also getting ready for the season. A group of volunteers is repainting the scoreboard and goalposts. They already painted the locker room, which hadn't been improved for years. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Over at Hudson's Bay, we caught up with the volleyball team as it wrapped up its practice. Coach Michelle Allen is looking for young ladies who excel on the court and in the classroom. We asked Coach Allen and some of her players what they're looking forward to this year and what they like most about volleyball. I love working with the kids, um, seeing the growth, seeing them develop into young women. Personally, I hope that um, I can like, you know, deliver a good performance, maybe go to college. Um, as a whole, I want to go to districts. I enjoy it because I get to meet new people. Relationships with people that I make on my team. <laughs> it's fun, we have fun. This is Coach Allen's fourth year at Bay. Nearly 60 girls tried out for the team this year. A reminder, the first day of school is September 8th, and to be ready, schools are hosting open houses, back-to-school socials, and curriculum nights for the next month or so. So be sure to check in with your child's school to see when it's holding one of these events. It's a great way to start the year. So my goal this afternoon is to help you make meaningful connections between...
The school district's leadership team is ready to start the new year. The annual leadership team retreat drew school principals, administrators, and other team leaders at the Bates Center in mid-August. After a message from Superintendent Steve Webb, participants got up to date on new technology and the district's plans for the upcoming school year. Breaking up into small groups, staff got to reconnect with one another and clarify this year's goals. Hard work pays off for a parent and staff members at King Elementary. From furniture to electronics, a truckload of supplies gives the school a big leg up when it comes to helping families. Now you have a place to come that you can call your very own. Keith Wells knows how important it is for parents to be involved in their child's education. That's why this father volunteers his time at King and why he's so excited about a donation by the home improvement store Lowe's. Just, there's so many different ways that I think it's going to benefit the kids and the parents. A $4,400 grant paid for a much needed improvement of the school's Family Community Resource Center. Lowe's delivery workers wheeled in tables, chairs, a refrigerator, even two flat screen TVs. All so families at King can have the resources to help students succeed. It's really, really pretty cool. Pat Rowe runs the Family Community Resource Center at King. As part of her job, she gives support in a number of ways from handing out shoes, clothing, and food, to providing internet access so parents can find work. Where parents can come in, whether it's just to come in and sit down and have a cup of coffee and talk to me about maybe some resources they need, or whether it's to come in and take part in a class, take part in one of our ESL programs so they can practice their English skills, whether it's to come in with their preschoolers who will be going to school here eventually and uh, listen to a story from the library folks. It's just a great, great opportunity for families to come in and find out that their school is a part of their lives. Keith, who wrote the grant that caught Lowe's attention, believes that active parents make a huge difference. If I'm involved with the school and that Rainy, my daughter, thinks that it's important for me to be here, she'll understand how important it is and how important her education is. The Vancouver School District is expanding family community resource centers into nine schools. It's a great opportunity for businesses and individuals to donate time and materials to help kids. Kids will bring their pencils and paper back to school. But there's one thing they can't come to class without, vaccinations. We went to the free clinic of Southwest Washington where kids and parents lined up to get shots for the new year. In Washington, children must have immunization records or a statement of religious or philosophical objection on file with their school. The idea is to keep kids healthy. Well, especially during the school year, we see a much higher rate of disease spread in the school setting. And so with that, we want children to be able to go to school, to be healthy, to limit absences. The free clinic of Southwest Washington puts on free immunization clinics on the first, second, and third Wednesdays of each month for uninsured children. Parents who want to take advantage of this service should plan ahead. Um, during the beginning of the school year, um, parents should expect a pretty long line. Uh, we have a lot of uninsured children still in the state of Washington. Um, so it's best to get those children immunized before the school year or you know, after the rush is, has ended. Parents should remember to bring their child's vaccination records so that the staff can know which shots are needed. For more on the Free Clinic of Southwest Washington, go to freeclinics.org. To find out what shots the state requires children to have, you can go to our website, vansd.org. The Transportation Services Department of Vancouver Public Schools is wrapping up its training for bus drivers. They're ready to be back on the road, but as Chad Young reports, other drivers have to be ready too. Traffic has changed in the last 25 years in Vancouver. Jackie Kessel is an experienced bus driver and knows how careful she has to be to keep kids safe. You're doing a lot of checking and looking and listening. That kind of caution takes time, which can be frustrating if you're behind the bus. They're not used to seeing us on the road. Some drivers lose patience, and that puts children at risk. I've had stop signs run often, and with children in the road even. You have people passing you on the right when you're unloading. You think you're safe to unload, and all of a sudden here comes a car. To be safe, follow some simple rules. When the yellow lights flash... Please slow down, use caution, wa start watching for students that could be walking or running to a bus stop if they're late. Uh, just keep your eyes open. And when those yellow lights switch to red, the stop sign comes out. That means traffic is all stopped. Everyone comes to a stop. 
And if the safety of the children isn't reason enough, not obeying the law can cost you. Bus drivers have the power to report bad drivers to police, and they get some help. The kids on the bus know that people are not supposed to go through the stop sign, so they see it happening. They're yelling the license plate to the driver saying, that car just went through the red light. A ticket is $394 and can't be reduced. Ultimately, however, the best reason to go slow is the simplest. If your child was on this bus, how, what would you say? How would you feel? What would you want me to do if your child was on this bus? Chad Young for In the Know. Police will be out on the streets the first few days of school, watching for bus violations and speeding in school zones. Remember that the speed limit in school zones is 20 miles per hour and tickets run anywhere from $189 to $353. In our Focus on Technology, we're looking ahead to October 14th. That's when Vancouver Public Schools is putting on its Technology Expo. It's a chance for the district to show off how it's using 21st century tools to improve student learning. Parents can check out cool hardware that kids are using in class this year, plus the latest software. But it's not just about showing off the equipment. Find out how educators are using technology to give students a new perspective on their lessons and preparing them for college and careers. You don't have to know a lot about computers to attend, so if you're a little behind on technology, this is a great way to catch up. Again, the event is on October 14th at 6 p.m. at Hudson's Bay High School. Admission is free and it's open to everyone. We didn't want to start the new school year without taking a look back at something fun from this summer. That's Spencer, a police dog, showing off for summer campers at the Jim Parsley Community Center. Spencer and his handlers from the Vancouver Police Department and Clark County Sheriff's Office not only gave the kids a show, they taught a valuable lesson about law enforcement. Uh, you know, better understanding of what we do and why we do it. Um, also to, you know, just to, to round them out a little more, you know, because sometimes we we'll go to classrooms and, and the kids are just really rambunctious and we got to show them that, you know, we're, we're an authority figure, yes, you know, we get them under control, but we're a lot of fun too. You know? Even though Spencer is still in training, he can sniff out suspects and chase down fleeing bad guys. This demonstration was all part of the Super Sleuths Camp, where kids learn how police solve crimes. Before we go, we want to remind you of a great resource for parents and community members in the Vancouver School District, our website. The address is vansd.org. You can find the latest information on school events, get resources to help your child in class, and find out how to get more involved. Plus, the district is now on Facebook. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Helen Raptus. See you next time on In the Know. Vancouver Public Schools has identified 10 core principles. We are learner-centered, performance, research, and results-driven. We value balanced, well-rounded, and relevant education, high standards and expectations, nurturing and joyful learning experiences, visionary leadership, continuous improvement, collaboration, and teamwork, the worth dignity and capability of every person, equity and justice. For more on the district and its mission, go to www.vansd.org. Vancouver Public Schools, imagine what you can learn.